Well, I think that we've got to wake up very soon to the fact that these chemical exposures are exceedingly... Um, well, first of all, they're ubiquitous. Uh, and, and second, people, uh, certain categories of people are more exposed than others. And, and unfortunately, it's often those in, in the most uh, disadvantaged socioeconomic uh, classes that are going to be the most disadvantages. We could take the, inst the uh, as an example, uh, uh, children that are born into families where many of the, the parents are working in, in agriculture. So they're going to be exposed to pesticides. They may be living in substandard housing, so they'll be exposed to pesticides as well in the home, not just the ones used in the field. Um, they might almost also be water contamination from not only the pesticides, but high nitrate levels that are used that can also impact thyroid hormone signaling. We have to take stock of the fact that currently on the Toxic uh, Substances Control Act list, uh, the, TC, the TSCA, which is luckily undergoing reform, much needed and much belated reform, that there are currently 84, 85,000 chemicals on this list. And that does not include pesticides, cosmetics and food, food additives and food substances. So we have to take stock of the situation. We have to say, what are the, we have to determine which are the bad actors, which are the worst offenders. We have to try and get them phased out. But it's going to be difficult. First of all, we've got to identify them. The tests are not yet there. This is one of the reasons I went into the field, because the way that we were testing these chemicals was obsolete. It was just simply not good enough. And today we're no doubt missing a lot of chemicals that are, are impacting on our endocrine systems that are acting as endocrine disruptors and thyroid hormone disruptors. And so we've got to improve our testing. We've got to improve uh, our legislation. And we've got to help people protect themselves whilst we're taking the worst offenders off the market.